Hey YouTube, my name is Lou, this is a legend, and this is some liquor. Welcome to the Legends with Liquor podcast. <laughs> this is going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Acura legend owners and enthusiasts, my friend DJ here. Um, he's yes. from Pittsburgh like me, and he's going to break down what he did to his legend, how long he's had it, what he's done to it, what his future plans are, and just mm. kind of share some stories between him as having an owner and how we met. And why we're here today. So, DJ, what do we have behind me? How you doing, Lou? It's a uh, 95. Uh, Acura Legend Coupe. Six-speed. Uh, type 2. Type 2? Type so two. It's a LS, right? LS trim? Forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Usually most people don't even realize that. And the whole difference between an LS was the GS and a sedan or, or in a coupe. But... Obviously, I'm talking to another legend guy, so yeah. here we go. I, I mean, I'll catch you along the way and speed you up where you drop off a little He's bit. He's going to do that. So, how, well, firstly, what got you into cars, and how did you end up with a legend? Uh, it was work-related. So, okay. I had a 1992 Acura Integra GSR. Nice car. And it was completely... Uh, it was in a position where it probably wasn't the most professional thing to be driving to a white collar job, right? So yeah, you know it was that crazy green and oh, uh, that's like the best one to have though. <laughs> it, it, and the one point seven liter motor in it ran great. It was no offense, but I love tracking down five point and beating them on high end and on the par uh, parkway here in Pittsburgh. But anyways. Um, I had yellow accents, and if you're if we're going back to that far, the one windshield wiper maneuver. Oh, so what, this was what the early two thousands. Uh, ninety seven, ninety eight. Wow. Okay. Right, and and even across the the eyebrow of of the windshield, I ha actually had someone figure out how to write Integra in Japanese. Right? Nice. So uh, I'm I'm in HR, and I was picking up. Um, a lot of people from the airport and it, it didn't take real long to figure out that I'm I'm in the wrong car you know so yeah uh, <laughs> I uh, need something a little bit more dull a little more professional looking just a little bit uh, so at the time my dad uh, was a salesman for Acura and uh, one of the local dealerships or something outside of it, it was local it was in Monroeville at the time and uh, wow okay so not to go off topic here. No, no, come on. Is that the dealership that had the... There was a legend that was stolen that only recently surfaced because they found it somewhere. There was a... I think it was a 91 or 92 sedan, black on black. Okay. LS. It was stolen right off the lot and now just appeared recently. And they're like, oh, it's got 9,000 miles on it. Um, really couldn't talk intelligently <laughs> about that. That's a pretty small world. That's awesome, though. <laughs> it has to be because there's only... There's only one dealership around here that's an accurate place. It was Maori Acura on uh, Route oh, 286. That's, it. <laughs> that's 100% it. <laughs> I don't know nothing about it. For the record, right? Yeah, he's so, not that type of person. We don't know where that car was, but I know where it's at now, which is hilarious. <laughs> so, uh, you know, they had a uh, they had that English racing green. Mm -hmm. It was a it was a legend coupe, the tan leather interior. It was absolutely gorgeous. Um, I was like, that's the car. You know, it's professional, it's elegant. Um, it was a six-speed. I'm into it. Talked to my dad. We worked out the price. I'm ready to go. So I spent uh, the entire evening detailing the hell out of my car because I wanted to try to get as much out of it as I possibly could. And so it's that morning. It's about a quarter after eight in the morning. And uh, I know you never had the opportunity to meet my dad, but he is professional 100% of the time, right? He's right. always well-spoken, uh, doesn't veer off the lane. He, he's, he's a guy that always appears like he's on camera, okay? Okay. I'm at work, quarter after, maybe 22 after 8 in the morning, and I'll never forget it. He calls me up. <clears throat> he's like, son. I was like, dad, I'm pumped. He goes... <clears throat> You're not buying the effing car. Goes somewhere else and hangs up on you. Okay, why? And I'm like, I've been working on this. 
I'm, I'm, I'm pumped. Like, this is my car. And no explanation. And it's the first time he dropped the F-bomb on me. And then he hangs up. So, uh, you know, I call him back. No answer. I call the general manager. Hey, it's DJ. He goes, so you talk to your dad. And I was like, yeah. I'm like, well, of course I talked to my dad. What? He won't answer my car. He's pissed. Or my call, excuse me. He's jacked off. Blah, blah, blah. And he goes, well, your dad this morning had the car put up on the lift. Frames back. Was it, what, like a year or two old or something at that point? Or how old? Well, let's see. If that was a, it was either a 94 or a 95. Sorry, don't remember. And this was 1999. Oh, okay. So my. Like, Okay. I'm like, still don't know why you talk to me that way, but whatever. So I went on a rampage. I blew off my entire morning of work. I canceled all my calls. I moved into a different day. I'm like, I'm finding a legend, Coop, six speed, today. And so I... And that uh, was like pre-internet, so... It, it, the internet was just starting yeah. to, to ramp up at that particular time. So I found this guy in Virginia so I talked to the guy and uh, this and that and he um, told me the price he's like do you have a trade in I told him what I had he's like really can you send me a picture because he didn't believe me because as you mentioned it's a little bit a little bit yeah. rare of an item so we we worked it all out and I was really hoping to get it at a particular price and sorry about it I, I just don't remember <laughs> so um I called my dad back. He answered, and I said, I found a car. Where is it? He said, it's, a, it's in Virginia. And what dealership? And I um, shared with him the, uh, the dealership of the time. He goes, who are you talking to? I said, well, it's this guy such and such. He's like, I'll call you back. Don't know what happened. Don't know what was said. Don't know how anything was exchanged. I didn't hear from my dad. But I heard from the salesman. So the salesman calls me back. He goes, I accept your offer. When can you be here? And he said, I'll be here Saturday before noon. This is Friday. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> so I go home. I still had all this audio equipment in my Integra that I think I shared a couple of pictures. I rip it all out. I take everything out of it. I clean it all up. I think I was up till 4 o'clock in the morning making sure that it was at a certain level. And my mom came with me. So we drive all the way down to Virginia. I find the car. And there's three people waiting for it. They were all wondering if I was going to show up. Wow. So I show up. And uh, I walk over to the car. And I remember this other guy with his wife going. You know, and then like walking away. So uh, he gives me the keys. Uh, we take it for a test drive. Um, what was really unique is I'm the fourth owner on this car. Huh. And it was built in 1995, and I bought it in 1999. And I'm the fourth owner on it. I wonder if it was like a lease or something like that. Don't know. Just a lot of guys, uh, from what I understood, there's a lot of guys at the golf course or the golf club or whatever it is down there. They It, it kind of like got passed around, if hmm. you will. And uh, and that's how I got the car. That's why I went with the legend because I thought it was a little bit more professional, uh, especially for what I was doing. And so how I liked it. How old were you back then when this all happened? Well, if if we're going back down to nineteen ninety nine. <laughs> Uh, do I have to divulge this? You know? Yeah, I mean, just kind of cur- just to throw it in there. Like, I bought my first Legend at 18. So, okay. like, I'm 34 now. I'm just kind of curious because <laughs> it'll uh, paint a picture with... I'm 45. So, you, yeah, we can do we'll some, we'll, some e- easy math. There that's like you. 18 or something. We'll just use that math. Well, that's cool. <laughs> I'll just take 21 years <laughs> off of that. There you are. <laughs> so, well, that's kind of cool. So, you're the fourth owner. Yep. Um, obviously, it was your first big boy purchase of a vehicle, right? Because the GSR was... Not really that, um, although that would probably fetch more than a legend right now, which is kind of interesting. Definitely. And there's so, someone in the group. Sorry, I don't know your name. Uh, obviously, no, it's not the exact car, but there's a gentleman that has a plethora of accuracy. Oh, so that's it's like, holy Tyson. crap! 
It's that's, Tyson. I'll say, yeah. wow, you have my integrity. You have my vision. And I was like, all right, he has a vigor in there, I think. Yeah. You know? So that's that's what I was talking about earlier that was with the other stuff. Tyson, he's that's the highest mileage coupe in the world. Like, gotcha. And Tyson, we should meet. Have a drink, and if you like cigars, it's on me. So, well, just go to Phoenix this year. That's where the National Wacky Legend right. Meet is. Um, I think it's in August. N A L M. Yep. All right. Pretty simple. Acronyms are everything. Yeah. <laughs> I told that to people. I'm like, oh, I'm getting ready to go to Nam. They're like, mm, like Vietnam. I'm like, no, it's a legend thing. You don't understand. Pick so, and choose the audience, right? <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> we've had this since '99, right? Yeah. So that's 22 years essentially of ownership. You have a lot of customization done to this car. So what got you into modding cars? Like, was that like I mean, obviously you were modding the GSR. Like, was that your first tuner car? Or what? It was. It was. It was the first tuner car. I was a big Chevy guy before that. Um, and you know, my as I mentioned, my dad was in car sales at the time, and he was a Chevy guy. And uh, we happened to move, and he transitioned from Chevy to Acura. And uh, he came home one day, and I remember him saying that. This is the first time I've ever driven a vehicle where the transmission, when he shifted, it didn't feel like it was built in someone's garage. I was like, that's kind of deep. And that's where the love started. It was the appreciation. Because if you're going back then, if you remember the five-door, I think it was 1987, when Acura first introduced the Integra, it wasn't that, it wasn't that hot. It wasn't that, that attractive. It didn't even, even have a lot of horror. Yeah, it wasn't all that great, but the quality. It was their high line is like, hey, we're Honda, but this is the type of quality that we can produce. That's what initially grabbed me because they had great resale value and it didn't really require a whole lot of maintenance. And, of course, the Acron was, I thought it was pretty. Yeah. So I jumped on. Well, that's cool. Yeah, I was... Never actually knew the story of how you had your legend. What legend on the word came from? Oh, I've got a lot more stories for you. Um, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I have a lot more bourbon for us to drink, too. So. Yeah, we need to uh, get some more bourbon. Where is that stuff? Yeah, it's right here. Oh. Well, <laughs> let's pause for one second so we can get more bourbon. We need to refill. <laughs> you obviously had this car for 22 years, and yeah. it's probably been through many transformations and many phases of hmm. where we are now. <laughs> so what was your first mod? Um, you know... And how did it progress from there? What was, give me a breakdown of what section happened or part happened, and then what yeah. mod bug bit you on the back, and you're like, oh, let's go full tilt. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, the first mod, and, and these aren't it, was, was a set of Blitz rims that I had custom ordered and took forever to get. Because um, at that time, there wasn't anything for yeah. the car it's kind of like how history repeats itself so when it first started there wasn't anything for the car and now it's like there's like nothing for the car um so and then you know the width is kind of thin on these so how to have them custom made took a while to get them uh, but that was ultimately the first mod um there was a car show in carlisle pennsylvania that i wanted to go to that some friends invited me to go uh, so we drove the car up there and he had the rims in the back of his truck and we literally put them on as you're pulling up on the show floor <laughs> just about it at the hotel you know we put them on and at the at the time i thought well you know i spent a really uh, like a lot of money to me at that time for a lot of for for rims so we we put them on and i thought i was going to take them off and just you know only use them for show purposes uh, yeah that did, that didn't happen um, that never happened. I mean, <laughs> you know, great intentions, but as soon as I saw him on the car, I'm like, I have a new car. This, this totally changed the entire look. So that was my first mod. Uh, the second mod was I put brown tint. I didn't use your typical black. Um, Is that what's still on there now? Yeah, it's still on there today. Oh, it's okay. starting to fade, and if, if I could find someone that could still get it and redo it, um, I'm interested. But yeah, so I, I used brown tint because I know who did it originally um, through our connections of just finding out who did what to your car. We'll talk about that off camera. <laughs> yeah, <for sure. laughs> How do you know that? <laughs> so yeah, I did the brown tint, and then um, it was just uh, it was very hard to plan out because of availability. 
there just wasn't a whole lot of stuff. So it was just one piece that I found or I would search online and, and find this guy or find this or I'd go to a car show or get an idea maybe on a completely different car and see if I could do that to mine. Um, there was a lot of negative in that search oh, you know, over I, the years. I know. It was like, oh, I like that. I can't do it. Oh, I like that. I can't do it. So uh, it was a little frustrating, but I wasn't happy with status quo i never am you know right. what 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 can i do to to take it to another another area so the one thing that the car had from the door or from the get-go is that it was clean even though it was the fourth owner and there was golf ball dings on the doors and stuff like that that were repaired <laughs> i was like clearly those are all gone now. they're gone uh <laughs> but the the paint was in really good condition the interior was clean the floor mats were clean i was like i have a base so if i can maintain that and i'm okay so when the 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 aftermarket or custom parts would come that's fine but if i can maintain it at a certain level of cleanliness yeah that's not like i'm good now you had this was this your daily driver at the time yeah so you drove it through Pittsburgh winters and everything. Yes, I drove it through Pittsburgh winters for two years. Woo! And then you have, well, I guess you don't have any rust, or if it was there, it's completely gone <laughs> now, right? Like, fortunately, I never had to fix any of that. That's 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 saying something because I drove my car yeah, probably two winters, but it, I would drive it maybe three thousand miles in those winters, and it just cancer, just all the cancer, and it just destroyed the rear fenders. Yeah, you'll you'll see it on the fenders. You'll see it on the rocker. You'll see it at the door seams on, on these cars. Um, you know, for as much as I like it, it was horrible in the winter. Oh, really? Mine was per I loved mine in the winter. Oh, I hated it. It was um, too torquey. Um, I, I, I thought it was one of the worst performing front-wheel drive vehicles <laughs> I've ever had in the winter, ever. No, I'd actually take my four-door. I had, I had a 92 sedan, by the way. Uh, legend. So this this isn't my uh, my oh, only yeah. legend that I had. And for some awkward reason, that was way better than the snow. Yeah. That's, this, well, that's what I had. That's why I was like, it's like a tank. I'm like, how could you say it was uh, horrible? Coops blow. In the snow. Other than that, they're sexy. <laughs> so. Yeah, the coops got you. Yeah, that's why I had to buy a coop. Um, <laughs> well, so you, what? Were you just riding around in the Pittsburgh winters on Blitz wheels in the early yeah. 2000s? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll... It was getting washed like twice a week. You know, it had a yeah, but, right? but it <laughs> like sucked. I'm just trying to picture this because for people who don't know how Pittsburgh is, they use the most corrosive stuff possible on the streets, which destroy all the cars instantly. Um, yeah, the rough. potholes you could live in and rent for five ninety nine a month, and this car hmm. would get swallowed up if it would hit a pothole. So that happens. It, um, it definitely to say that I'm like, Ugh. like because me, I had. I bought my car and almost instantaneously I did all the suspension mods possible to it. Full coilovers, big brakes, the whole nine yards. Okay. And I just took that through the winter and it was just beautiful. Beautiful <laughs> car in winter. But it was an automatic, so you just you have a problem, pull the e-brake and just slide around as needed. This is manual. Some so. know how to do that, some don't. <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> so, um, so what was it after the wheels, which is the typical step one of every car guy? So after the wheels and the tint, um, I did a slight upgrade to the audio. Like I changed the head unit. And then from the head unit, um, I found a guy in Atlanta uh, named Cliff Downey. And he literally made my front end. Yeah, you definitely don't have a, um, a stock front end by any means. So uh, it's it's... It's custom. It's extraordinarily thick. Um, it can take a lot of damage. Like I've, I've, every, it seems like every time I take it out, I find a rock. Where a rock finds me. But it never really damages the piece. It's just the paint. And it's always easily repairable. Body guy loves it. But it, it is, it's low. It's, oh, yeah. It's, I mean... it's very, very low. There's And that comes with its own set of constraints with everyday driving. Um, and and there, there, there's a funny story. So so I, I find him, I reach out to him, 
Uh, I tell him what I want. He's like, I got that mold. Not a problem. He, uh, I buy it. He ships it to me. I have it installed, and it doesn't fit. <laughs> I'm like, uh, hey, man. <laughs> uh, I just paid a bunch of money for a custom bumper. Why doesn't it fit? I, I got a little bit of a problem, right? So he's like, what do you mean? So I, I, I took a couple pictures of it, and he, and he he's like, Shit, I sent you the wrong one. You know, because there there was there was two front ends, right? So they were very, very, very similar. So there was the the one front end that was made for just the to the addition of a of a factory you know car. And then he had another one that was for a full wide body kit and he it's accidentally like sent one. me for the wide body kit. So um crazy story. So if you don't know Cliff Downey, uh Go find him. Check him out. Uh, he has a little bit of a claim to fame. Uh, if you ever uh, go back and watch some old school Busta Rhymes videos, do you know about this? No, I don't no? know about this. All right. So if you go back, and he's in Atlanta. So um, he was driving around one day in, in, a, in a particular modified vehicle. And uh, some guy catches him. And I might be butchering the story a little bit because it's not my story. But... They, they, they catch him in a uh, gas station. He's like, hey, this is amazing. I can't believe what you did. And basically what he did is he took an F-150 and he ripped the front end off and he put a Mercedes front end hmm. on an F-150 and it was perfect. I mean, it looked like that's the way that that truck came. Absolutely gorgeous. So if you want to see this truck, go on YouTube Pull up a Busta Rhymes video called Break Your Fucking Neck. And you will <laughs> I was see, like, I recognize where this is going. Right? Like, and I you'll see that, that F-150 bouncing in, 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 that, in that video. So um, we have this, you know, I told him what was going on. And he was um, uh, a consummate professional. He was very apologetic. And he had some things going on in his life. You know, he had, his dad was in New York and he was having some health problems. He's like, listen... I'm going to, I got to go see my dad. I'm going to come see you after I see my dad, and I'm going to personally fix your vehicle. I'm like, so Cliff was up here in Pittsburgh? So Cliff goes to New York, comes down, he shows up at my buddy's shop in that red F-150 with that nice. Mercedes front end with this crazy system in the back. So he comes walking out, and he's a pretty big cat. You know, so he comes walking into the shop with a uh, silk Hawaiian shirt on with these linen pants and, um, like, these leather sandals. That's Fires on one of those, um, j just, you know, just a little, little baker's outfit and starts sanding and cutting my... <laughs> Freaking front end, my fiberglass front end, while he's dressed to like go out to the club and just starts cutting it to fit right then and there. And he had some fiberglass and he fixed it all up and this and that. Da da da. Um, he was here for like two and a half, three hours, fixed it all up. I was like, I felt like I, I, I needed to take care of him, right? So, him, his buddy, me, and my buddy Gary. Um, you know, we get cleaned up real quick. We go in his truck. I take him out to dinner. I'm like, you know, it's on me. You know, thank you. I mean, he should have did it anyways. But right. the whole thing, I was like, I, I just felt like I needed to do it. And then, uh, you know, I think I needed to put a little icing on the cake. And, you know, we had to go to Erotica. For those people that don't know, that is a... Uh... <clears throat> what do we call that professionally? <laughs> a gentleman's club. Oh, that's, yeah. We'll just call that a gentleman's club. Yeah, that'll work. A gentleman's club, right? I was trying to think of something more off of that name, but like, okay, that's fine. Gentleman's club works. Um, yeah, it works. So we fixed the front bumper. Fixed the front bumper, and then took it to paint, and there it was, and then the whole rest of the car um, was piece by piece by piece by piece. The biggest jump from that was uh, I did the audio and when I did the audio I I wanted to go I didn't want to go small 
I wanted to do something one and done. Uh, so that was next, and then the rest of it was just little here, little here. I got an idea, let's do this. I got an idea, let's do this. Yeah, because you were, you were working at a shop or something like that, right? Yeah, I, uh, little, little Love. I was working at this place in Monroeville called Audio Communications. Um, they're still around. You know, unbelievable. They're still around, and they did a lot of the audio work there. And uh, Chuck Clark's still there, my man, doing a great job. And uh, he even he even housed my car during winters, uh, <laughs> just that I didn't have a place to put it. We were always moving. I moved around a lot. Uh, yeah, great guy. Exceptionally anal about what he does. Uh, it's probably one of the things I love about him. But even better than that, he's just a great guy. Well, that's good, yeah. Speaking of anal, you were definitely to the T, always super fancy. It's got to be perfect whenever you do stuff, which is why I'm bringing you on here as the first person. Like well, thank I have, you. I have not found a more clean legend in my, what is it, 16 years of meeting legend owners. So <laughs> cheers to you for that. Well, I appreciate the compliment. There's, there's, there's things that still aren't uh, to They're the way a- that I would prefer. There's everybody um, else's standards. There's even my standards, and then there's like DJ standards is the way it works. <laughs> but it's, uh, you know, look. I mean, everyone else that has these cars or your builds or or any other builds, um, they they come with headaches, and you know, and and, and one of the things I, I just remember growing up, you know, listening to my dad is talk to me about Plan B. All right, so you have an idea. Mm-hmm. And you're going to implement an idea, and what are you going to do when it goes crooked? What, what happens when it goes sideways? And I've had a plethora of things that have gone sideways. Um, and, you know, by nature, I've never been a. Lou, I'm not a patient guy. I, I can tell. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm a hothead. I probably uh, jump too fast. Um, but that's probably something that this half my years on this earth project has kind of taught me a little bit through life is like, eh, you, you, you may need a plan B and many times C and D you know, to, to get it to, to where you want. And so I, I've had so many frustrations and so many um, Let downs and disappointments? Uh, uh, plenty. Probably more than my fair share of disappointments. Seriously. Um, because it just wasn't what I was expecting or it didn't go the way that I thought. And coming up with another avenue to get it to a point where that's acceptable. Um, it's It's been... Um, it's just been a vehicle for some... Probably some personal growth, too. You know, to probably make me a little bit of a better guy. That's always you know. good to have a car with a story behind it, and it actually shows more than just like, "Hey, I put all this money into a car. Look, hey, at look me. what I bought." Right? Yeah, like yeah. that's the scene that we're in nowadays, where people, like, I know we're going to go into details of like stuff like the hood, the fenders, even the front bumper, for instance. That doesn't exist in today's culture. Everybody's like, "Oh, click on eBay, buy this, buy that," <laughs> yeah. and they don't understand that you, when you buy a legend, there's nothing that's off the shelf. Everything is custom. Everything, Everything is, you know, sure, you might have a couple things like your, um, your bolts holding your fenders on and stuff. It's like a universal part. That's great. But, like, oh, you want an intake? Oh, you have a nitrous system. Oh, you have an exhaust that's specific to the car. Like, that doesn't, you can't just find those anymore. Heck, yeah. even your suspension is discontinued. You can't even get those anymore. I didn't even know that until you shared with that with me off camera. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he, he even mentioned something that was interesting because, uh, did you ever watch wrestling when you were a kid oh yeah all the time i don't mean wwe i mean wwf oh yeah wwf wcw ecw yeah. so do you remember the uh, the million dollar man ted Di- yep ted dibiase yeah perfect line everybody has a price everybody and you almost got me <laughs> when you told me what my suspension I was like, oh, that's worth a premium right but now. But I was like, that's really interesting. But then I stopped. I was like, well, what am I going to replace it with? And I was like, eh, eh. I we'll talk I, about that yeah, later. Yeah, we could fix that. <laughs> that's not a problem. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, 
I know you've had some future plans with this and thoughts of where you want to take it. I know I've talked to you probably out of selling it because you're like, oh, I'm going to sell. I'm like, no, keep it. <laughs> like, it's you've only going to go me up. out of that three times. Yeah, it's only going to go up in value. Yeah. It's never going to go down. <laughs> well, I mean, well, I'll never get what I put into it, and I don't have that expectation, but it's just, uh, you know. Yeah, but if you see years go car, by, you know, you you uh, priorities change, and 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 I think we're similar in a particular aspect of um, I like to improve, yeah. and I want more, and how what's next, and what's the next level, and what we're you know, it's always it's like Lowe's, right? The the old tagline of Lowe's: never stop improving, whether it's professionally, personally, with a toy whatever it may be. Um, so when you sometimes, especially legend owners, when you start running out of ideas or you start realizing, like, what else can I do? Then that's where I think that crossroads you enter mentally where you, you may start veering off to see, well, well, look at that shiny new thing. Yeah, you're either you know? going to switch to a new platform or you're like, okay, I'm going to actually put the money into it and do it right and go over here. Right. And that's where you took yours, obviously. Like, some people are like, most people nowadays can't even fix a blunt head gasket or a valve cover leak or mm. anything with that. They cheap out and do all the cheap parts, and then they're like, oh, it breaks in 500 miles. Well, yeah, you bought the wrong stuff, and you cheaped out. Like, you granted, you, you don't... For. Yeah, you don't need a, um all-aluminum racing radiator to make it work well. You know, you don't need that. You need this proper part. Like, I'm curious what type of maintenance have you had on this car over the years uh maintenance wise so um at the beginning um i followed the book so if it needed to go into acura for recommended maintenance even though it really didn't need it it went so this car's been essentially dealer maintained its whole life yes ah, that's awesome <laughs> um, there's there's records out of at, at, at a, a few you know, local Acura dealerships, and um, and there there are, there's there's some that I'll never see again, right? So, uh, but the, it's been pretty much uh, Acura maintained for the majority of its life, with I would say the exception of probably um, the last five to seven years. And, we, like, well, I mean, in five to seven years, what, you probably, the last thing you did was a timing belt or a clutch, something like that? Just anything from, um, let's say, uh, an oil change to the inspection to, um, you know, uh, uh, a cousin of mine owns a shop, uh, you know, down in Kansburg, Pennsylvania. And it's, it's great because it's, it's uh, even though it's a privately owned shop, he blew a hole out in the wall in the dealership in the service area and it's something that you would see at like uh, a higher end like an Acura or BMW the wheel alignment so he, he, he went into the concrete he went four feet down into the concrete and he put the wheel alignment um, in there so when you drive in it's completely flat and then yes, you can raise like you and me that can we can get in cars. there so if you have a lower car in your local and you need to get anything, I mean, because there's not that many cars that are lower than this, uh, Community Motors, Pike Street, Cansburg. We'll do a shout you're, out to the end of like who you're helps good. take care of it, who right? does good, who does bad. Um, so, and, and then I, because it's so low, I, I, I recently, last year when I had it inspected, um, obviously they're going to let me in the shop because, you know, I, I need to look. Um, and her family. Uh, I noticed a hole in my exhaust. Totally, never even knew it was there. Did but you it grind was, a hole into it, or just? Uh, it was from scraping. Oh. Yeah, it was from scraping, and they patched it. And uh, but they're now doing a lot of the, the work um, on the car. Now, if there was something that was required um, maintenance-wise with the motor, I would uh, cross that bridge when I got to it. The biggest thing that I've noticed is that you have this nitrous kit right here. So it's a Zex kit, right? Yeah, that's correct. This is a dry kit. Dry kit? Dry kit. Um, you know, plumbed into uh, an intake that I made out of turbo pipe. Okay. I, 
right. So I had a, a 75 shot in there, but it was uh, not running right, so I tuned it down to a 50. It's pretty simple, and uh, it runs smooth as hell. So is this your purge kit that I'm seeing going running Correct. back here? Yep, uh, it's, uh, it's a purge kit, and uh, when we get to the interior, it's pretty easy to access, and it's kind of stealth. Okay. So you did all the dress-up bits, all the purple screws and bolts. Right. I'd say this, uh, these right here, this radiator mounts, that's interesting. I've never seen that changed out on the Legend before. If they were, uh, I don't even know if they were actually made for the Legend. Uh, I saw them on their website. I noticed the bend was right. I think it was actually labeled for a Civic. Hmm. But I thought that it would fit. I bought them and rolled some dice and it worked. <laughs> gotta well, like it when that happens, right? Oh, you gotta love that. So, got all this purple. Is there a specific color that this purple is that you know of? The, the purple actually started from the Zex kit. Oh, okay. I so it's just the same as that. Yeah, I was looking for an accent color, and it was there the entire time, so I just ran with it. So you'll see the bolts, and there's some paint work, and, you know, the tower bar was done. Um, you also see the hood mount, uh, the hood struts, you know, done in the same color as well. You know, bought new ones and figured, well, let's paint them too. You know, it'd be a nice little custom... Uh, piece to the car uh, it's actually a GM uh, yellow top Optima battery uh, did kind you of paint thought, match that? yeah I did I huh. thought that would be in a, a little bit of a, a, a neat a neat idea I gotta admit it wasn't my idea it was my body guys and I, I asked them I was like could you really do that and uh, well there it is some hmm. of the things you can't see um, all the the headlights throughout the entire car actually uh, they've all been converted to LED uh, and the wiring and the harnesses and uh, the yeah. relays and all those things to make it work and not have a problem with it. Um, there's we changed the, uh, the the chip in the car, uh, so you're no longer restricted to 124. Oh, so the car's chipped. Yeah, what chip is, is in chipped. it? Um, I gotta admit, I forgot who the name is. Is it, it Dinan Bayou back in the day? No, it was Dinan, but then someone bought it from from Dinan and uh, converted it. I still have the factory chip. Uh, it's, it's in one of my containers over there. Um, but it did remove um, the limiter on it. I, I can tell you that from personal experience. So it did work. But there's also a stage three clutch masters uh, clutch in it as well. Did you ever change anything with the flywheel or just the factory six-speed flywheel? Uh, it is factory, but I'm sure that you're going to talk me into doing something different and doing more performance products here soon. So I'm... I'm you do have my ear. Oh, we'll definitely change that. <laughs> hey, if we can make it faster, um, I'm interested. Oh, we. You make it faster, I'll make it prettier. That, that, that to me that's, sounds that's like a good That's a good combination. Good combination, right? Yeah, I mean, you definitely have one of the prettiest bays I've seen in a long time. I mean, I noticed, you know, you paint match the uh, throttle plate cover. Yeah. Uh, you even paint match the valve covers and the fuel rail covers to match the car. That's stuff you don't see anymore in the car scene and definitely shows as far as the classicness goes so i'm willing to continue to go forward with it it's just uh, a matter of the scheme it, it has to flow you know, right I've thought about the intake manifold as well i know a lot of other guys have done it um, but if, when i take that off and do other items i want to put a little bit more thought behind what matches with what and how it's going to go um so I'm just not going to rip it off and have it done. I, I want to have a little bit more thought behind it. So DJ, you've got a very custom legend, as I've been showing everybody. Uh, you have a very custom front end from Cliff. Yeah. Uh, walk me through some of these other things. I see clear corners. I see custom wheels, custom paint on the calipers, fenders, just a whole bunch of mods. There's a whole lot of stuff. Do you want to start at the hood? Yeah, let's start at the hood. Let's start at the hood. So I found a fiberglass hood for a sedan, and it had a that shark fin look to it i liked it i wasn't sure if it could work so i bought it anyway um brought it to my body guy he cut the majority of it off and we first had the intention that we were literally just going to cut a major hole in the factory hood because it obviously the lines fit and just graft it in and um, talking to guys at 3M, um, DuPont, a couple other people, they highly recommended not to take that approach because they thought you're removing 
such a substantial part of the hood, you're gonna get it's gonna tweak, it's gonna bend, it's gonna get a little it's gonna get a little wonky on you. So they all recommended why don't you just attach it to your factory hood? And there was uh, again I spoke about challenges. There was about three or four different challenges that we ran in there to, to, to get it right and to make it look factory. Uh, so there's a, still a little bit of wave. It, it's not exact, but um, I'm pretty darn happy with it because I know the, the, the amount of challenges that we ran into to get it to this point. Um, so uh, it's still unique. It's one of a kind. You don't see it. Uh, and it matches the fenders. Uh, so I was pretty good with it. Cool. So... So you got a custom painted grill, matches the body as well. Yeah. Um, now this front bumper, I haven't seen one of these in years. I know you said Cliff did it. Cliff it Downey, is. he's the man. So, I mean, it, I know it's it just looks so good though. <laughs> it, it it, and that's one of the things that I liked about it because it looked good on the car without anything else. You know. Even if you didn't put side skirts on it, even if you didn't go with the wide body kit, it looked some, like something that Acura would have made. And yeah, like this is their Type S avert variant, yeah, in my that's opinion. Yeah, good point, good point. It, yeah, it just looked Acura-ish. And the, the double fog light was, was pretty interesting. The, the outside Pia's are white, uh, the inside are yellow. That's not the way that it came. Um, he had a, a different fog light. Uh, for the outer whites and one broke on me from imagine that picking up another rock uh, while driving and I and I saw those and I, and I picked them up and you know I eyeballed it Lou I, I, I rolled the dice again and it fit so I was pretty I was pretty stoked yeah it's it's an awesome front bumper like that is one thing I would love on my own car <laughs> so I can't even lie uh, I think he still has the mold. Uh, you know, I still interact with Cliff. We can get you one if you want. I'll definitely have to reach out to him. <laughs> so, so before we get to the rim, um, you know, I, I, here's another point that it's one of my more favorite point parts of the car. Uh, you know, yeah, I love the ashtray with how the nitrous was hidden. Um, getting that shark fin. Uh, fender in was that's that's a pretty another interesting story so i bought the fiberglass fenders and and look guys they don't fit they're horrible i mean if you if you line it up front you have a gap in the back if you pull it up to the, the back it doesn't line up front and then if you center it the whole thing looks like shit so i i was you know i'm, I'm at the body guy shop and, and we're just going back and forth at it and i just remember looking at the guy i was like look I know of a fender that fits absolutely perfect. And then we got this aftermarket part. And I just remember the guy looking at me goes, you're kidding. Because he knew where I was going. I was like, let's do it. So this is the factory fender <laughs> that came with the car. And we just, you know, destroyed the, fab uh, the fiberglass fender, took the shark fin out, and we... He just made a little hole and made it a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger and he grafted it in and we knew that this would fit. A lot of work, a lot of effort, um, but it, it, it's the fit and finish is, is pretty oh, good. Oh yeah, like the fitment and, um, just along here looks amazing, even up here. I mean, yeah, you might be destroying other rare parts <laughs> to make your car better, but... Yeah, let's not get into an accident because then I'm like, screw it, right? So we'll... Uh, yeah, like it's it, technically it would be all numbers matching if this was a modern car because all the pieces are still factory. <laughs> no doubt. No um, doubt. <laughs> so while we're still up on the front, yeah, go over yeah, these. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about the uh, wheel suspension, um, Eibach Pro Kit. Um, those are the springs, the Coney adjustable shocks with the big reds. They're on the lowest setting. Um, Ingalls Camber Correction Kit, the Goodrich stainless steel braided brake lines, and the uh, the slotted and um, uh, slotted and drilled rotors. Slotted and drilled rotors. Oh, wait, no, these aren't slotted. They're just drilled. Uh, Maybe that's the rears. No, nah, they're they're both. Oh. And then uh, oh yeah, I no, actually see, had the, the hub here painted as well. And that 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 paint that purple was just a you know a continuation of what we were doing underneath the hood. And uh, you know I found some uh, matching 
uh, lug nuts and you know and off camera I told you I even found the uh, you know the plug here for the air so we'll be, we'll be we'll be changing that out to match yeah we'll, we'll change that out too as soon as the, you know the, uh, the the snow is gone and you know wet sport rims um, you know it's not that it's a uh, I'm trying to see what size tires are on these uh, they're, they're still 18s they're oh, still so 18s. well yeah what's the overall size on the pino can't even see it well, because they're a little wet, right? <laughs> just a little yeah, wet. I, I don't use any tire shine at all, guys. I just, Never. You know, just just spit on it. And, you know, that, that, that's that's what pops out. Well, screw it. We'll find it. On, yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, we'll find it on another wheel. <laughs> <laughs> but I love to see that you have the mud flaps, the factory ones, painted to match. All yeah. the body moldings painted to match. I mean. Well, the, the, the neat thing is, Lou, that, that's factory. Okay. So DJ, you have a very custom interior. Uh, walk me through some of your modifications. I see you have the white face gauges, the what was that a stainless steel bezel for the gauge cluster? That's correct. Okay, and you have the silver accents instead of the burl wood. Very right. classy, very period correct if I would call it that. Nah. So and well you point. have a very nice shiny shift knob. Uh, a six-speed Mugen, you know, from Japan, and the shift boot as well. Um, there's Mugen pedals in there. There's a custom legend uh, dead pedal. Uh, we redid the leather uh, in the interior for a two tone uh, to your left. Uh, those are Audison speakers. And I swapped the speaker covers from the rear deck to the front doors. I like the contrast. I like the brown, chocolate brown look. And it has that same feel when you look at the rear deck cover as well. Um, one of my favorite parts, though, Lou, is, uh, is a little bit stealthy, is, is right here at the ashtray. Right? So when you open up the ashtray, you'll notice that uh, it, it's not that anymore. So right. we have a button up here for the purge kit for the nitrous system. And then both buttons are remote tank openers for the nitrous oxide system. So I don't have one tank, I have two. So instead of stopping the car, or opening up the trunk, you know, turning them off, turning them off... Uh, I don't have to do that. I can just open up the ashtray and turn them on and off um, as as I need fit. And then, of course, you know, you got that F-16 fire switch uh, to arm the system and close it, and it's off. Well, you got two tanks, so that means you're, what, Toretto, Brian Earl Spillner, or something like that from the period, from Fast and the Furious? You got to want it, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> you have two big tanks in the back, don't you? Uh I'll let you uh, tell me what you think when I when we get there. Yeah, I have to say it's very clean. Uh, a lot of factory pieces. Uh, what's that? A Bluetooth speaker up there? Not a Bluetooth speaker. A uh, microphone. Uh, yeah, that's actually uh, a part of the uh, the Kenwood uh, navigation system. Uh, that okay. up there. And if you happen to see this bar, uh, I removed the uh, factory antenna. You know, we took oh. that off. We closed the hole. We we sealed that shut. Uh, it doesn't do too bad. It does it replicate the 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 factory antenna at the same level? No, but who uses factory radio that much anymore? Anyways, yeah, so, especially nowadays. Yeah, with XM. So uh, yeah, I mean it's uh, there's not a whole lot that we can do in the interior. I, I had different floor mats in at one particular time, and I just grew weary of them. So I had that diamond plate cut and. Uh, I just never thought that uh, I continue to fit. Sorry for the stuff in the back, guys. That's all a lot of cleaning. Uh, yeah, you are equipment. ready. For the I, uh, show. You got your Gryolds garage, right? And then... uh, yeah, Grios is uh, is definitely a product that I'm a big fan of, and you know I can typically be ready for a show within 24 hours. Uh, oh, you, you saw the hidden gem. Yeah, hardcore. So what is that? It's called hardcore performance. Um, Back in the day when I was working audio, uh, or before audio communications, a friend of mine uh, opened up that shop, and uh, he did a lot of custom things and engine swaps, and I was helping him out, and he helped me a lot with uh, some of the ideas with the car, and uh, you know, it's kind of like just a, a tribute to the uh, an old friend of mine that I, uh, you know, helped me get into the game. Hey, that's what it's all about. Finding friends, helping them get further along with the car. I mean, we never even touched on that. That's how we kind of came to fruition of being friends. Oh, that's a story. <laughs> that in itself is its own story. 
because I had people that were sending me your car at Carlisle in like 2010, 2011. And they're like, look at this legend. And I'm like, I've never seen that car before. They're like, it's local. It's local. I'm like, it can't be. I've never seen it. He, he hides. <laughs> yeah, you hide very well. So. So the back end. Um, well, well, actually, okay. did you, what's going on with those clear lenses? Ah, that's good. So. Is it like I, painted clear a little bit? Uh, well, what we did is we, we tried to get a little bit unique. So, you know, they're red factory. Right. So I bought the clears. Um, I did switch them out to the LEDs and everything else to make it work. But my body guy thought, wouldn't that be neat if we just color coded it to the car? So it blended better during the day, but right. at night, it's still illuminated. Hmm. As soon as you turn on the parking lights, they're on. I know it's hard to see right now, but I can tell you have these taillights smoked a little bit and the brake lights. Yeah, that, that was done the same way. That's not tin. Uh, we, we, we took them out. We sanded them. Painted transparent black. There you go. Ah, you can see that pretty good. And, uh, and then clear coated them. Now, Guys, remember, I mean, we're, we're talking about Legends, we're talking about a 90s car, so when you're talking about a 90s car, there's three car, there's three colors to the taillights, right? So, I mean, you had to have your red for your brake and parking. White, obviously, till today's standards is your reverse, but back then, it was, it was code that your turn signal had to been amber. And all three colors will still show when in use. Yeah, we, we have a little, little, little bit of action back here. Just to, to grab a Woo. little bit of attention. All right, so going from the back to the tail, you know, those are four uh, JL IB4, they're 10s. And uh, that panel was uh, color key to the, to the same color as the car. Um, those are the two nitrous tanks. Um, they're big enough to run for a while, it looks like. Yeah, I, I, have a, I, I can go a little bit. You know, before before running out and, you know, custom enclosures and, you know, this was all done um, and cut out by hand. You know, it was just handmade out of uh, yeah, that, fiberglass and, you know. That's really impressive. It it's pretty it's pretty neat, you know, and, you know, audio communications did a lot of the work. And uh, some of the original equipment was uh, PPI amps. Talk about going back to hardcore 90s, um, you know, and, and, and there they are over on, on the right-hand side. I did have the trunk lid done at one time. Uh, there was a monitor and the snap-on tools to, to, to get it out, but Lou, it was so damn heavy. It would just <laughs> it would just slam shut, and it cracked the screen. And I had to replace the screen, and I just got tired of it. So I was like, you know what? For how cool it is, it it, it it's not cool enough for the functionality of it. So I I ripped it off. So what's what's the logo above the AC logo there? PPI. Oh, I never knew that. Yep. That was the original PPI logo from way back when with the uh, PPI Art Series amps. Hmm. And that's... The fact that this has held up this long... <laughs> I mean, you did this literally, what, 20 years ago? Uh, yeah, it's about 20 years ago. You know, 19, 20 years ago. A lot of the parts of it are uh, pressure fit. Um, it, it, it It's held up, but it's wearing. Uh, so I am... Uh, I do have plans to update uh, the back of the trunk, uh, or the trunk area, I should say, in the trunk lid here uh, pretty soon. Well, that was one thing we didn't talk about. I didn't ask that you had an exhaust on here, but I see it now. You, you see it, so it's actually a gritty exhaust, and I wasn't uh, extremely fond of, of, of the tone. Um, and the, I, I know that the factory gritty sport if you will the, the the muffler itself was pretty wide and without getting too far into a different story um I w you know we, we took the car down to nopi one time and i was moving a lot of product for stone too oh. and it was the deal it was like dj you show up at nopi we'll give you the muffler <laughs> so i think i've only I seen went. one other legend person with a gritty muffler and that's me <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, the car's super clean, man. I mean, definitely keep up the positive looks and vibes of it. So do you have any future plans with the car? What's your next goals that you want to reach? I mean, I know you say it's more power. Is there any more body modifications you're going to try to do? Um, from an aesthetic perspective, that will never stop. If I have an idea, um, I'll continue it. 
um, but from a performance um, perspective, of course. And I, and I think that's probably just going to come from additional dialogue between you and I and what we can do to, to make it um, a better performing vehicle with, uh, I just want to do it right, which I'm sure you'll guide me in the right direction. Oh, yeah. We'll make a whole bunch of power, and you'll make it look really, really pretty. So I, I appreciate the opportunity to show you the car. You know, there's some people out there that helped a lot of way. Audio Communications, Monroeville, Pennsylvania. JR's Auto Body. A lot of friends and family with their ideas and their thoughts, and all the people that I had the opportunity to meet through multiple states. It's not a finished product. It's still a flawed product, but uh, it's getting there, and I look forward to building uh, a few of the next steps with you in mind. Thanks a lot, brother. You're welcome, man. Thanks for doing this with us. Thanks, guys.